Minecraft. Very fun! That's a good description of Final Fantasy II. Let's continue with the bonus episodes. Into the end. All right, so, the end. Ooh. Boy, I'm glitching out. There we uh, go. We... Yeah. So, the end. I guess it might be different in multiplayer. Um, one thing I noticed is I tried to build, like, a box where you spawn in the end. Mm -hmm. And each time you respawn, it seems like it replaces like a five by five by five area where you spawn. Yeah. And so like the box that I a... built went away. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was something I didn't realize about kind of like the end physics or whatever. And it seems like this time it glitched out and like the obsidian is down too farther than it used to be. Mm -hmm. I actually had to do uh, several different end uh, world generations just so that I could get the spawn at like a, a height level that I was comfortable with. Because I, I had I had already built the uh, schematic for this giant station here, so yeah, I had to kind of work with that until I got about what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, the end. I think it's actually a kind of neat looking area, and there was lots of loot and things to like go around to in here. Mm -hmm. But I feel like with the uh, end uh, fog uh, or draw distance or whatever, like the area, it was slightly too big. Like I felt like I could never really see all of it and appreciate the area true yeah definitely that's and it, and another unfortunate thing about the yeah, end just fog the way or just, the draw distance yeah, just the way that the lighting and the fog works in the end uh and yeah you've got plenty of glowstone around and so like as i'm just kind of like flying around the area you can really see and appreciate it mm -hmm. um and so yeah i like the fact that it's apart from the enderman like kind of like a big mostly peaceful area and there's loot chests and you can go all around and explore and you could make a base in here and yeah, this was uh yeah, this was meant to be the uh their Genesis station. All these little villagers were the supposed to be the ancients, uh the settlers that you were mm -hmm. receiving messages from. So mm -hmm. and killing off as they got in my way. Yeah. <laughs> they, they seem to be pretty abundant. <laughs> they they yeah, there's still like there's still tons and tons of them. And it's uh -huh. interesting, they're all over in this one quadrant actually. Yeah, I wonder what the what the deal is. I've there. I've see, I feel like I've seen um yeah, passive mobs apparently congregate uh, sometimes as well. And so I wonder if the AI, like, they don't walk completely at random, but they're slightly more likely to walk to the north and the west or something like mm -hmm. that. And then just over time, they all end up in one area. Could be. Um, yeah, so there was plenty of loot in here. And other than the enchanting table, like, I don't know that I used any of it at this point. Um, let's see. I guess we'll go up to the top to the... Well, I guess we could go any. I just want to see which area I'm going to first. Let's see. Let's do them in the order sure. that I did it. Uh, I think I did FIL first. Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, I have to ask, uh, does FIL stand for anything that we can say? Uh, no, that was uh, basically it was a reference to Fez, the video game for Xbox. Um, which is another so game, unfortunately, Phil... I'm not familiar with. Oh, it's a good, good game. Um, but Phil Fish is one of the creators of Fez. So FIL was just kind of a reference to to Phil, his his first name. I see Phil is spelled like spelled that. It's just like someone's way. name. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of a reference at the time that I made it. Um, he was going through a lot of hardships. Uh, the creation. If you ever watch indie game the movie, you'll you'll kind of know like how much trouble he went as a game developer to create this game, and they're still going through trouble with it with Microsoft and oh, all kinds of different stuff. But at the time, uh, he was at a press conference and someone asked him about the, the, uh, the state of modern Japanese games and what he thought about them. Mm -hmm. And he kind of bluntly said, well, I think they suck. And for some reason, the entire universe just blew it way out of proportion and called him a racist that he hates Japanese people. Um, <laughs> and I just felt so bad for the poor guy because Really, you know, someone asked him his opinion, and he right. was like, I, I don't like these games. I don't like the modern Japanese games. So uh, it, it was really unfortunate with all the hardships he, he's already gone through to produce this game that someone would, uh, you know, or I guess the, the entire gaming community would kind of turn on him like that. And, of course, there were supporters, too, that knew how ridiculous that was. But anyway, um, in the game Fez, there is his tree designs look just like this the oh with kind of the bent trees yeah and then the bent square uh uh trunk systems so right Bonds it was just kind I of like. a tribute to phil fish 
I see. Cool. In the so, game fez. I'm sad because I have a chunk error and I've like reloaded the chunks a couple of times uh, where this little water staircase is. Oh, yeah. But this I thought was clever and beautiful. And I was also amazed that like I never fell out of it because I guess it's only mm -hmm. like one deep at each step. But if you just hold down the space bar, like you can just swim mm -hmm. right up and down it. Um, and can, so that you can was actually awesome. you don't even need to hold the space bar and you can actually swim down it even faster. Oh, I was like not not brave side. enough to try that because once again, <laughs> I'm, I keep falling out of the world. I keep losing my loot. I don't right. want it to happen anymore. Um, I really like you've done this in a few places, the uh, kind of like uh, purple and pink. Um, and one other color blocks that feel very end and Enderman purple sparkles like. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like it's a good color scheme for the end. Mm -hmm. And yeah, despite the fact that it killed me a bunch, uh, yeah, there were there well there were things I did like and things I didn't like about this area. Okay. And so I guess let's kind of go up into it. So the beginning when you come up here and there's creepers like I heard them coming and uh, I like that little surprise and so that's cool. And I had fun, like, battling the creepers, and then, uh, yeah, destroyed some spawners. And then all of a sudden, a cave spider appears. And any time oh, a cave yeah. spider appears on this map, uh, <laughs> it pretty much means something's about to explode. Right, right. Um, and and that, yeah. one, that one got you, didn't it? That first one. Yep. Yep. Uh, that one got me, and I think two others of them got me. I, mm -hmm. think, I, just, I think I died the TNT maybe three times in here and then fell out of the, you know, died of fall damage like another three times or something. <laughs> yeah. I died a lot in here. Yeah. And so admittedly, like I could have had unlimited ender pearls. And so if I wanted to just like throw pearls around, like I could do that and maybe that's a better way to do things. You could like sure. pearl over to where the trap is and like set it off and then pearl away. Sure, um, sure. But yeah, I, I, this was just an area that I struggled with. And so I think I didn't like it just because like I, I found it difficult. Mm -hmm. um but yeah as usual you could just you know be patient and kind of like build staircases everywhere and eventually you know you get through the area mm -hmm. and my fraps is lagging up for some reason here let me exit out real quick okay all right i think we're back in eh, fraps is still going slow i don't know if there's something in the game that's taken a long time to render or what um, and then, yeah, and then I felt dumb because I got to the top and like when I was at the bottom, I was like, oh, the birdcage is going to be down there and then there's going to be an entrance at the top. And mm -hmm. then I got to the top and forgot to look for the entrance. And then like, so I went back down and like, yeah, I just spent so oh, much, no. I spent stupid amounts of time kind of just wasted on this area. Yeah. I've had uh, several people that had to ask me and they're like, where is the entrance to this place? I, I almost asked it. you. Yeah. I was about to email you, and I was like, you know, I always feel stupid when I do that, and so let me take a little more looking around. And then mm -hmm. I came back in, and I was like, oh, duh, it's right at the top where I thought it was going to be when I first looked at the area. Mm -hmm. And then this bedrock stuff, it was definitely uh, an interesting challenge in terms of the cave spiders until I plugged them all up. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I haven't, can I, I'm going to break inside here just to like sure. see what you got going on in here. Yeah. Uh, were they getting like this two is, kinds of potion effects or they are getting a regen? I don't know. Let me see. I, I actually ended up redoing this, this, uh, Oh, they're getting speed potions, but that's before I realized that speed doesn't. Oh, right. Cause their AI mobs. doesn't choose to use it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've actually redone this trap to where it's way, way more effective. Um, the problem with it was is that all these holes, uh, cave spiders, natural tendency, right? They they follow you. They through track the walls. you through the walls, yep. and then they they climb up. So it wasn't working quite like I intended it to. But I've I've definitely fixed it now, and it's probably one of the worst things I've ever come up with. It's just, <laughs> it's just I can so imagine because the first time I came in here and I was like, oh, this is so hard to traverse. And then if there were cave spiders as well. But then yeah. when I came back, like I don't think I encountered any more spiders. And so mm -hmm. I yeah, I reasoned that they must be getting caught with their pathfinding. Mm -hmm. um, and furthermore, oh, yeah. And then after they get caught with their pathfinding, like the spawners won't spawn anymore if there's like, you know, 16 mobs or whatever. Sure. It is in the chunk. Right. Yeah. If they get stuck in there, it's, it's over. So, yeah. Um, and so that must've been what happened to me. I actually, as a result, since I wasn't getting attacked by cave spiders, I thought this was going to be more of a maze. And so mm -hmm. I spent my time trying to like figure out what's the correct path through. Cause I figured there's oh, going to be a way right. to get the birdcage, but I guess there isn't one. You just have to like, uh, diamond pick through the obsidian. Yeah. It's just, it's all parallel or intersecting lines, uh, perpendicular lines, I guess mm -hmm. is what I meant to say. There's at least one cut. Uh, yeah, there was, I, 
I don't know if that was intentional or not. I, I sometimes I forget what I I mean to do. <laughs> okay, so the one cut, yeah, is what kind of threw me off and like made me think that it was going to be a maze for a little bit, and it was going to be like, mm-hmm. oh, you have to find the cuts, and then you'll be able to walk through. Right. Um, but yeah, I was able to, you know, once I did some walking around and didn't find anything, I just reasoned it out. I was like, okay, I remember there was a diamond pick in a big huge chest surrounded yeah. by like arrowheads and other things, and I obviously yeah. like. That's supposed to be a signal. Hey, I'm giving you a diamond pick for a reason. So yeah, that was that was the idea. Yep. And so yeah, in general, like I feel like, in general, you're very good at that in terms of making it clear like how you're supposed to get through an area, and often you know having multiple different ways that you can go so that you find find your way. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. So I appreciate that as a player. And I guess I can just like bust out here. Boom. So yeah, another thing I, I noticed you didn't do is you could uh, update this water. As long as you update one block, the whole thing would would update, oh, and then you could be a little bit me. faster to swim up it. Um, right, I was you could just swim vertically. Right, I was scared to do it because I remember when I placed these two wood blocks, I was like, okay, that won't update the water. Right, but it I didn't think occur it will to me anyway. Didn't. I actually, yeah. well, I placed the box oh, yeah, that were not next to it, but yeah, now I can place next to it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, now my chunk error is also half resolved itself. I see. Yeah. Oh, and it looks like there's even land, maybe not all the way below it, but below a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. I've fallen out of the world so many times. I'm just I'm oversensitive to the possibility <laughs> of doing it. And it's funny because, like, when I'm on camera, like, I'll always be, like, using the boats and going through, like, the center of this canal. But, like, if I ever have the camera off, like, sometimes I'll just, like, walk along the side and, like, not think anything of it. Right. Um, yeah, I think I'm also, yeah, like, a little too sensitive to, like, doing embarrassing stuff on camera. And I, like, need to get over it because, like, I find that when I do stupid, embarrassing things, like, people laugh and enjoy it. And um, Oh, sure, sure. This was another area where I could have benefited, I think, from doing the ice pathways rather than the boats and the water, Mm -hmm. um, especially with the rail here. Um, but the reason that I left the rail here was just cause, uh, I designed this a long time ago. Um, Oh yeah. Speaking of the rail, like over uh, where I'm still breaking the glass over here. Uh, if you turn around back, um, over at the end, uh, I accidentally discovered, I think I knew this at some point that you could put torches on glass but oh, basically yeah, yeah. it's it's uh not lit over here and so i always ended up with enderman on the tracks blocking the tracks it's like zombie pigman sure. and the nether kind of thing sure and so uh in the case of enderman um oh, it would have been I'm nice sorry. to give a two high instead of a three high uh glass hallway in here um mm-hmm. just to keep the i don't know you know on the one hand you know you're the evil map maker and you can like be annoying people and on the other hand it would have been nice not to always have my mine carts get stopped Right. So, yeah. Just I think the, the best way to, to, to have made it less annoying would have been to just do uh, either a straight boat boat path with, you know, boats all the way from the mm. the uh, center over there. Or, like I said, the ice path where you can do your sprint jumping and yeah, which is pretty much the fastest way to travel uh, vanilla in game. Mm. I believe it's faster than mine carts. I think, yeah, I did some experiments a while ago, and I'm not sure if it's changed since then. I think it's close to a dead heat between those two. Oh, okay. Um, I might be misremembering. Let's see. And then, so, that was FIL, and then I did Transparency next, mm-hmm. which I think was my favorite area even before I played it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, just because I took a look at it, and I like the visual, I like the... Uh, you know, TNT and gas and just like the sheer ridiculousness of it. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a diamond block right at the entrance, which is always nice. Um, which you haven't seen me uh, get, but I end up actually going back and getting the diamond block because I needed another diamond pick. Okay. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know if there was any inspiration for this area, but I just want to fly around it now and like see how awesome it looks. Yeah, um, not really. This was just experimenting with all the cool tools and stuff that you get with MC Edit and World Edit and everything and kind of came up with this design. And this was another one I designed a long time ago without the intention of using it in a, like a challenge map of any oh, kind. Oh, I see more diamond kinda, blocks like it, if I had like, yeah, traveled at, around at the edges. Yeah, each end of the... Yeah. Ah. So 
just in case you happen to try and explore the whole thing, you get at least a little reward there at mm -hmm. the end because it is a huge area with very little uh, focus on the goal except for in the center. So right, yeah, if you ended up walking all the way around it, give you a little bit of reward there. But yeah, um, I don't know. I just I like this design and. Once I realized that I could use it in a challenge map kind of situation, like when I originally designed it, it was actually flipped over on its side uh, horizontally. I see. So, yeah, it was meant to be kind of like a, uh, I don't know, flower type of design <laughs> or something. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, it's kind of. Yeah, yellow. once I flipped it on its side, it was like, wow, this would be a really hard area to traverse. The glass, you know, makes it mm -hmm. difficult. You can't see which yep. glass you broken um gas can obviously destroy it really well and then uh yeah the lava curtain i thought was kind of fun yep so yeah uh, the, basically i walked into this area and then i was just like oh this is gonna be so much fun and so <laughs> I, have you seen my video of this one like yes yeah um i don't know if i got super 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 lucky with the enderpearl throw mm -hmm. uh, because i feel like i actually landed inside the birdcage despite the fact that i didn't have an opening completely to oh it. yeah yeah you kind of and so I think it. I glitched a little bit, um, which was super lucky. And so I am curious to know if you know how easy or hard any other people have uh, felt that this area was. I don't know how many people I've seen do this. Uh, Cilantro Gamer, uh, I definitely watched early mm -hmm. on. And um, his first reaction was to climb all the way up to the top up here uh -huh. and uh, basically checking things out. But what he ended up doing was uh, bridging out over the gas spawners uh, dropping down and breaking all three, uh, while at the same time placing a block on the on the bottom one so that he could stand on it and not fall. Um, wow! For, of course, yeah, that's cilantro gamer man. Yeah. He's, well, yeah, he's just he's amazing. amazing. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, then he just kind of bridged his way in, and and I believe he set off all the TNT ahead of time. Um, yeah. But yeah, other than that, I don't think I've seen many people do this yet. So it's oh, I interesting. Realize, yeah, I like to think of it as like a like kind of more of a puzzly area mm -hmm. um, because like you 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 figured it out pretty well and, and found your way around it. Um, it. It took you a little while, but eventually you did it without too much resistance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like that. You know, like I said, depth, I think, is more or is just as important as like difficulty. So. Um, obviously if you just tried to jump in there, you're going to get stuck without an ender pearl. Mm -hmm. I mean, I actually, the first time I tested it, my, my reaction was to take a bucket of water and dump it, dump it over the bird cage oh, okay. mm -hmm. then swim down because that would kind of stop the blast. And I figured, you know, it's help stop the gas explosions, but I didn't bring an ender pearl with me. Mm -hmm. I could not get out. I spent, whoa, there you go. <laughs> But yeah, when I did that, I spent about an hour inside that birdcage trying to figure out how to get out with, you know, 20 gas around and mm -hmm. all the lava had updated by that point and it was a mess. So, yeah, you can you can either do really well or have a really hard time in this area. Yep. Um yeah, and I also felt like I mean, it happened to me. Oh, here's a bunch of records. Um yeah, when I got out, like I ended up Falling to my death, but fortunately I <laughs> fell somewhere on the glass, and so it was like, all right, that's good enough. I can go pick up the record for my corpse. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so I just, I love the look of this area. I like the fact that it was kind of like a challenge that basically you have one or two chances to try to, like, do something brilliant, and then after that, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And Right, right. Um, yeah, this was just my cup of tea. Well, I will make note of that. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian likes it. Uh, and I like the name too. Mm -hmm. It seemed to intrigue a lot of people. Um, yeah, when I was just yeah, every, reading everyone the four I, signs, I was I, like, ooh. Yeah, yeah, everyone seemed to do that. Transparency, ooh, I want to go see what that is. So I'll have to um, remember that as well. I guess I need to go back up into the top if I want to see. Yep, yep, yeah, I haven't placed any torches up here, and there's just, let's put some Endermen and some minecarts. Everywhere. They don't seem to want to get it. I got an Enderman in a minecart uh, at one point earlier off camera. Um, and it was kind of funny because I can't teleport when they're in the minecart. Mm -hmm. All right. And so Enemy Mine, you have not seen because I have not uploaded that video at the time that we're recording this. Mm -hmm. 
And so I will let you go first, and I want to see what your reaction is to uh, when we walk into the area. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? That's the only thing I can think. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So. So you climbed all the way to the top. I climbed all the way to the top. Actually, I bucketed most of the way to the top because I started climbing and then I was like, this is ridiculous. It's really tall. And so I took one bucket of water and I just did the water bucket trick. Oh, yeah. OK, OK. Um, wow. Holy cow, man. You cobblestone the heck out of this place. Yep. <laughs> and I think that was the wrong thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Was this uh, before you kind of found the inside, I, I take it? Uh, yes. I did not try to find an inside. It didn't occur to me that there was an inside. Um, and so I was like, all right, let's start at the top. And there was like a loot chest up here. And I was like, okay, I got the loot chest. And, and I'm like, well, if I want to go down, I guess I could just like pour a bucket of water. And uh, I made a big mess. <laughs> and then that made it really hard to get inside. And so I am curious to know, like, if there was a way that you expected people to tackle it and what happens, like, if I were to remove all the lava, would it look really cool or? Um, I mean, it would probably look a lot like it does now underneath it. Um, stone and cobble and ores and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, down here at the at the beginning, there was, holy cow, this is a big place. Um, the water from the, uh, the, the boat way, I guess you call it right leads down. And so I assumed you would go down here. Mm -hmm. and... Oh, I did go down here and I discovered that the water is one thick and then you fall out of the void. And so sure enough, I lost another suit of iron armor falling out of the it... world. Oh, it's actually three thick. Oh, okay. So, I were thinking yeah, it, I, I fell. If you fall from a distance. Okay. Oh, and so, so my first swim... experience was I fell from a height and I fell out of the world and I was oh, like, yeah. oh, the water's yeah. not very thick. And if I hadn't had that first experience, I might've thought to swim under the lava and it just, right. yep. so where'd you go? I'll show you how I meant for you to, I'm at the bottom of the waterfall basically now. Oh, okay. Um, right over here. Uh, I'm doing a three. Six. Oh, there we. Uh, there you are. Okay, great. So yeah, once you swim underneath the lava curtain, um, oh wow, you'll get over here, and there's like a little waterfall coming out. And oh, if you follow up, and this whole bedrock area that I've never mm -hmm. seen before, and Looks so like I, I'm supposed to go up the middle, I guess. Yeah, if you follow the water, you'll right. end up in the uh, kind of the center area where. Okay, the, and so I encountered uh, that water. I ended up yeah digging, you know digging my way into the side, you know, just at random. And I encountered the water. And when I encountered the water, yeah, I encountered magma cubes and creepers. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, okay, I've come in too low. Like things are like coming from the water stream above me. I need to attack this from higher up. But then right. I could not find my way out. Um, I dug and I dug and I dug and there's so many silver fish and I didn't have any food on me at that point. And yeah, I, I had a miserable time in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a nasty area. Coming up this waterfall is pretty grindy and tedious, but yep. uh, there's lots of ores on the way up, so I thought that would kind of balance that out. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, the idiot who uh, yeah ended up finally getting in here had no wood on his person, which I never oh, no. do. I'm always carrying wood, and for some reason, I was putting away some inventory in a chest because I thought for sure I was going to die in some lava, and so I was going very light, and it ended up mm -hmm. being a long trek, and I was carrying tons of diamond and iron and... Uh, I couldn't make anything out of it, and then I ended up burning to death before I ended up getting any of it back to base. And so this was, yeah, I think the closest. Oop. Whoop, found a trap. Yep. Yeah, set off one or two of those as well. Um, <laughs> and yeah, there was, some, there was some decent loot in here. There was the Efficiency 10 Diamond Pick, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. which I thought was troll loot because basically if you have an Iron Pick, you could tell when you're about to mine Silverfish. If you have that right. pick... Even if you're mining a good block, like there'll be a silverfish block right behind it that you accidentally hit. And so sure. that's yeah, like it's, it's kind of good loot and troll loot at the same time. Um, not only because of the silverfish, but this is probably going to be one of the last areas you do in the game. So right. It's like, it's like getting it. Sweet. I got efficiency 10 diamond pick. Wait, I'm almost done. Right. 
right now. So yeah, just me being mean. And so I'm going to continue up the waterfall because I haven't been up through okay. this section. Um, and so what so I so did you end up going up this way or did you? No, I, I basically I found the middle of the waterfall and found some of the mobs. I tried to get out and ended up dying. And then I started from the top and just dug until I heard monsters. And mm -hmm. then I dug a few little passageways. And finally, uh, right over here, uh, I found a tunnel basically oh, from the okay. outside. And that was close to the birdcage. Like I'd spotted it at some point, And then like I tried to tunnel in from a different direction to tunnel close to it. And then, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I did not realize how many spawners were in here. And at that point, yeah, I just Unbox. took a fire resistance potion and just ran over to the birdcage and grabbed it and ran back out. Because mm -hmm. I had had enough. Yeah, this is a pretty nasty little area. Um, yeah. There's actually, I don't know if I did it in this version because you got, I think this was like the one, it was supposed to be the 1.1 1 .1 version. 1.1 1 .1 yeah. that's named 1.0 in the file name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think I updated it one more time after that because I realized I had messed up and then I, there was more stuff I wanted to change. You know, the map's never really done. Right. Um, but the blaze spawners, where are they at? Let's see um, if they're trapped. Holy, well, I think I found them. Can't even see in here. Oh no, they're not trapped. So in the in the in the newest version, when you break the blaze spawners, they're hooked up to a bud switch. Oh, so, that is mean. Yeah, it blows up. Wow. But. Well, yeah, this was this was a terrible terrible place. Yeah, so I was trying to dig around the back, and there's all this bedrock basically around the backside of the birdcage. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was trying to dig through there and didn't manage to do it because I knew where the birdcage was after I had. So yeah, I finally decided, all right, I'll just come into the middle of the room and use a fire resistance potion and just power through it. Use yeah. a regen potion as well. Oh, so yeah, yeah, this was a yeah. tough area, but at the same time, yeah, like it's this was the second to last area I did. And so yeah, by the end of the map, you've got a lot of loot. And so yeah, you're allowed to make tough areas. I don't mind that. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I guess if I just dig in one direction, I'll find my way out. Well, theoretically. <laughs> I guess that's what I... Yeah, here we go. Lava. Great. Oh, what am I... Oh. Oh, dear. This is interesting. There oh, we go. Oh, just dig up. Yeah. Yeah, dig up. So, yeah, I made a big mess of this area. Oh, and then also over in the corner, I went over to this corner... Oh, yeah, was... there's a little loot box back there in there. I think it was just like a diamond chest plate. I don't think I even took it. Um, I think it's still in here. It had a bunch of enchants on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by the time I got in here, like, I was already in a bad mood because I was, like, not doing well in this area. And, like, there was, like, a diamond super sword over there. I was like, yeah, psh, diamond sword. I didn't even look at what enchants were on it. And I saw right. this, and I was like, eh, some armor. I don't really care. Um, That's a nice chest plate, though. And when I got over here... There were silverfish blocks, and I was like, I wonder if the silverfish will open something up because I'm always hopeful that there's oh, like a sculpture. Right. And so I killed a few <laughs> silverfish, and then all of a sudden I hear cave spiders. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, dear God, I know what that means. Yeah, they're still not setting off the trap here. I think possibly I haven't opened up quite enough cubes. Could be, could be. Or something. Like, I'm actually, yeah, oh, yeah, here's glass and TNT. Yeah, I figured... Oh, it's because we're in creative mode. They're oh, not they're not chasing us, us. So right. So they, they spawn, they've got to kind of track you, and then they right. hit the pressure plates. And so, yeah, I managed to somehow escape this area without setting them off, but I was sure if I stuck around, they would. Although at oh, this yeah. point, I'd also gotten the sense of, basically, if you stand right on the loot chests, you got bedrock and obsidian below you, and so you probably True. escaped the explosion. True. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah i also like the fact i don't know if it was intentional but mine ends up being a double entendre here in terms of it's either a place where you go and mine for resources or it's like landmines that are everywhere <laughs> right yeah that was intentional very nice very nice also i kind of little reference to that old movie enemy mine uh i forget who was in that yeah, I, I think uh Anyway, alien movie about alien aliens. So yeah, thought that would the triple entendre. <laughs> I guess I don't know. There's probably another word for that that I'm not aware of. Yeah. Double meaning. I don't know. Um, all right. I guess we can make a cut and head over to the great architect of the universe. And there's still more to come next episode.